Hi, and welcome to the part two in the series of three part series on these symbolic examples. Uh, we're going to just continue right where we left off with part one. We're looking at symbolically representing, uh, in this case, let's look at symbolically representing the value of the annuity shown at the valuation date. So I recognize here, I see that I have annual payments. The timelines in years, I've got annual payments. They're not level though. The payments are three and then eight and then three and then eight. So there, there's a pattern there, but they're not level. And I want the valuation, uh, I, I want to value this annuity at the valuation date, which is uh, at the time of the first payment. So it's implied there that's immediately right just before that first payment of three. Now, a natural thing for students to do in this situation, and natural for me also, is to view this as two different annuities. And so let's move the eights up, and then let's view this as an annuity with level payments of three, and then in, on top of that, an annuity uh, another annuity with level payments of eight. I can find the values of each one of these annuities separately and then just add them together to get the value of the, uh, uh, of the original annuity at the valuation date. So I've got, uh, you know, just by the picture, I can see now that these payments of three and then on top of that, the payments of eight, these are all payments every two years. So those are biannual payments. So I'm going to need a biannual effective interest rate. So I'll let B denote the biannual effective interest rate. And to illustrate, you know, further what I was going to do, which is to value these things separately, I'll just change the color of the payments of eight to, to blue, for instance. So now let's focus on the, the payments in red there, the payments of three. Uh, that's actually pretty easy to value that at the valuation date because I have a single symbol that gives me the value of those payments of three at exactly that, uh, that valuation date. Let's see, there are six payments of three, they're biannual payments, and this is at the time of the first payment. And so the value of those payments of three at that valuation date is just a three times an A double dot angle six at rate B. That at rate B is, is, is important because that's a biannual effective interest rate that's telling me that those payments are biannual payments. I've got six biannual payments of three that I'm valuing at the time of the first payment because I have the A double dot, uh, A double dot there in that expression. So what's in red there gives me the value, um, of, the value uh, the value of those payments of three uh, at the valuation date. Now the payments of eight, there's a little bit harder because uh, these are biannual payments. And so let's see, I could take an intermediate valuation date uh, at that time of that payment of eight. And uh, in that case, if I value the payments at that intermediate valuation date, then once I get that value, I'm gonna need to discount it one, one period, in fact, one annual period to get back to the original valuation date. So let me introduce the symbol A for the annual effective interest rate that I'm gonna need when I'm discounting um, the value at, at the time of the first payment back one, one year. And so uh, the, the value of those payments of eight at that little short valuation date, that intermediate valuation date would be an eight times, there's five payments, five biannual payments of eight. So that'd be an eight times an A double dot angle five at rate B that I need to then discount for one year. So I multiply by a V with respect to the A, with respect to the annual effective interest rate. That's the annual discount factor. And of course the V with respect to A is just a one over a one plus A. Generally V is one over one plus I, but the I here is the annual effective interest rate is what I'm calling an A here. So that's correct. That's one way that I could symbolically represent the value of the annuity at that valuation date. Again, there's lots of different correct things you could do here. I want to start with one incorrect thing, though, because this is a common mistake. Let's look at this expression. And I'm, I don't even want to put that it's equal to because it's not. This is a mistake. What's wrong with this? Uh, what's wrong with this expression? 3 times A double dot angle 6 plus 8 times A angle 5. Well, there's a couple of things wrong. First of all, the there's you need to be specific you need to be careful with what interest rate that you're using on these a double dots and the a's it's with respect to with respect to an annual effective interest rate or a biannual effective interest rate well they're both biannual payments so i should be using a biannual effective interest rate so now the three times the a double dot angle six at rate b that's actually correct but then the eight times the angle five with respect to B is not correct. That's, that's the problem is, is with that A angle five at rate B. Because what does A angle five give you? A, it gives you a value where? One period before the first payment. Well, the period matches up with, 
here the payment period, which is the biannual period. So this is one biannual period before the first payment of eight. So that's two years before the first payment of eight. And that, that would be where I've just inserted the, the, the short vertical arrow. So the eight times the A angle five at rate B would actually give me the value where that short arrow is. That's not where I'm trying to value it though. I'm trying to value it where the long arrow, the, the long vertical arrow is. That's my original valuation date. But I can do that by, by taking the eight times the A angle five at rate B and accumulating it for one year. And I would do that by multiplying by a one plus A. So I could correct what's wrong here by taking the second term there and multiplying it by a one plus A. Now that is correct. That's another correct expression uh, that you could use then for the, uh, for the value of this, this annuity at the valuation date. Okay, let's go back to the original problem. I wanna show you a few other ways to do this problem. It's lots of different correct answers. So a few other ways. Let's go back to the original problem. This is, this is really a, uh, what I'm about to show you is really a, a useful technique. Okay, so let's look at, uh, this is the original uh, uh, payment stream that I have. Now the eight, the first eight, I can think of that eight as, I can peel off a payment of three and then think of that eight as a three and a five. So that's what I'll do. The first eight I'll replace by a three and then on top of that an additional five. And then do that for all the other eights and what you'll have then is, a, is an annual payment annuity of three and on top of that biannual payments of five at, at the appropriate time values. Now I've got annual payments and biannual payments, so I'm going to need an A for an, I'm going to use an A for the annual effective interest rate, a B for the biannual effective interest rate, and I want to value this thing, uh, this annuity now at the uh, at the valuation date. the The payments of three should be easy for you. There actually there are eleven payments of three, and they're annual payments, and so the value at the time of the first payment would be a three times an A double dot angle eleven at rate A. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, and then what about the payments of five? Well, the payments of five, uh, there's a lot of different correct things you could do. One is to value those payments of five as a five times an A double dot angle five at rate B because those are biannual payments. That by itself would give me the value at the time of the first payment of five that I need to discount for one year. So I then multiply that by a V with respect to A. So that's one thing I could do. Um, another thing I could do is write, I'm going to leave the first term alone, but I could have used a five times an A angle five at rate B. The five, <clears throat> excuse me, five times the angle five at rate B gives me a value one biannual period, one two year period or two years before the first payment that I then would need to accumulate for one year to get back to the valuation date. So that's why I have that times a one plus A. Uh, that's the annual accumulation factor. That's why I have that uh, at the very end. So both of those expressions are correct expressions to value the, uh, value the original annuity at valuation day. Uh, let's go back to the original problem. We'll show you one final way to do this. This is probably to me kind of the, the least intuitive way to think about it. However, what you, let's, let's see what happens. So instead of viewing the eight as a three and then a five, let's view the threes as eights minus a five. So the first three I would view as an eight and then minus a five, and then view all the other threes as eights minus fives. Once again, the eights are annual payments, the, the minus fives are biannual payments, so I'm gonna need an AEIR, which I'll denote A, a biannual effective interest rate, which will be B. And then look at the value at the time of that, uh, where the valuation date is. The eights I would value, again, there are 11 payments there, so the eights I would value as an eight times an A double dot angle 11 at rate A, because those are annual payments. And then look, actually the minus fives value, I have a, I have a single symbol to represent the value of those at that valuation date. So that would be minus a five times an A double dot angle six at rate B. So my answer there is that uh, I could value this annuity this way as an eight times an A double dot angle 11 at rate A minus subtract off the five uh, times an A double dot angle six at rate B. Keep in mind the first annuity, the A double dot angle 11 is at rate A because the eights are annual payments and then the 
uh, a double dot angle six is at rate B because the fives are biannual pins. So even though this was kind of the 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 least intuitive to me to way of thinking about it, the the expression that we got is the simplest expression of all those that we've done so far. So lots of different ways of doing these, and and, um, and it so happens this this one kind of gave me the simplest expression. Okay, let's look at one more example. Uh, in this example, let's symbolically represent the value of the annuity shown at the valuation dates. Here I got level payments of two throughout. I've got 11 payments of two. But at the time of that middle payment of two, the, the periodic effective interest rate is going to change from an I to a J. And so uh, what that means is that I've got to use that time period as an intermediate valuation date. I have to, I have to value all the, all the twos that come before that using an interest rate I and all the twos that go after that using an interest rate J, an, an EIR of J. Okay, now the, the issue then is, well, what do I do with that two in the middle right there that I just highlighted in blue? Well, there's a couple of options that you have. You can view that two, you can group that two with the twos that came before it, or you can group that two with the twos that come after it. So either way is correct. So let's see what, what we get in, in these situations. Let's group the two with the twos that come before it. Now, I have that dotted line, and what that means is I've got to group all of those twos in blue at the dotted valuation date, but I, I have a symbol for that. Uh, there are, what, six payments of two there, so the symbol for the value of those six payments of two at the time of the last payment is a two times an S angle six at rate I. So then I want the value of all of these payments at the valuation date, and I'm, I'm denoting that by a V. You can see where the V is. That's the I'm trying to value everything there at that valuation date. Well, let's value the payments in blue first, uh, and the value of the payments in blue would be 2 times S angle 6 at rate I would give me the value at the dotted line at that intermediate valuation date. I need to accumulate that for five periods using rate J now, and so the value of the blue payments of 2 would be a 2 times S angle 6 at rate I times a 1 plus J to the 5th. The 1 plus J to the 5th is accumulating, though 2 times S angle 6, the 5 periods at the changed rate of J. Now I need to add to that the value of those payments that are in red. When I have a, I have a, a symbol to represent that, uh, that's the value of five payments of five periodic payments of two at the periodic effective interest rate of J. And so I would just get a two times an S angle five at rate J. It's valuing it at the time of the last payment. And so that's my answer. Uh, that, that's the answer when I group the middle two with all the twos that came before. So finally, let's group the middle two with all the twos that come after it and see what we get. So, once again, I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to value all the payments that come before the intermediate valuation date using an interest rate I. And so that's f those payments in red then. Uh, so, uh, since I'm, uh, that's those payments in red. There are five payments of two that I'm valuing one period after the last payment of two. So, I use the symbol two times S double dot angle five, and I'm using an I during that time period. Once again, I need to accumulate that for five periods using rate J, periodic effective interest rate J, to get to the valuation date. And so the, the value of those payments in red at the valuation date will be a 2 times an S double dot angle 5 at rate I that I then multiply by 1 plus J to the fifth to accumulate it to the, uh, to the valuation date. And then what about the payments in blue? Well, I've got six payments in blue that I'm valuing at the time of the last payment uh, using effective interest rate, uh, periodic effective interest rate of J. So symbolically, that's a two times an S angle six at rate J. So there, that's my expression. So lots of different things you can do. Um, so there's... Uh, 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 that's, that's one thing I want to get you, want, you know, you don't have to do it the exact way that the solution, when you're looking at a solution, you might have another more creative way to do it. And so uh, uh, please go back through this video and there's a lot of technicality, you know, not a lot of technical stuff in here, but please go back through this and, and make sure that you understand it. And we'll uh, do some more examples in the next video. I'll see you then.